Dr. Gupta. Um, excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think Dr. Gupta summed up a lot of the discussion that uh, took place earlier on today um, quite succinctly. So I, I, I very much shorten my text since I've also made part of the intervention earlier from the floor. Um, but without that, uh, let me um, take this opportunity to congratulate, uh, of course, the Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India, um, and also, of course, the Institute of Defence Strategic Analysis, and all those uh, partners who have been involved in making this uh, Delhi Dialogue uh, a very successful event, and also for my appreciation for the um, hospitalities uh, extended. Like I said, um, Dr. Gupta has quite succinctly summed up a lot of the uh, previous discussions, and so um, I think I will just focus very much on what um, I think um, is, or I see how the, the Delhi Dialogue uh, can proceed in the, in the future. Now, um, we see that Delhi Dialogue is a of course, the Track 1.5 uh, forum um, to grow in significance and importance uh, in strengthening and deepening the ASEAN-India cooperation. Within the ASEAN uh, process, uh, the only, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, the only other one, Track 1.5 that exists is uh, the, the one that ASEAN has with um, the plus three countries. We call it the East Asia Forum. That's the other track 1.5 that exists that exchange views um, on issues of political, economic, social, cultural. So, um, in that sense, I think the um, ASEAN India dialogue relation uh, through the Delhi dialogue provides an important uh, avenue for uh, discussion. Um, We've seen the success uh, of the ASEAN-India relationship over the past few years catapulting beyond what have, I would say have been um, taken over uh, the last uh, decade. Um, I mean, we have adopted the ASEAN-India vision statement, um, a new strategic level of partnership, um, as well as, of course, the ongoing plan of action, which will be um, expiring very soon. And on that, um, this new plan of action will uh, pave way for, I would hope so, to be a much more exciting phase in ASEAN-India relationship. And I will be working closely as the coordinator for ASEAN-India with um, my counterpart, your Excellency, His Excellency Anil, on a new plan of action that will um, hopefully make uh, move the ASEAN India to the next plane. Um, what's so significant about the next plan of action is that it takes place uh, immediately after ASEAN itself arrive at the juncture of um, the ASEAN Community 2015. So, in that sense, the summit last year has also agreed for ASEAN to look beyond 2015. And I think that will also have to be taken into account on the plan of action. Um, on the economic side, a lot has already been said. And I think um, there's nothing for me uh, further to add, uh, except that i just like to also echo um, the point that in terms of central to the um, economic cooperation um, and also ASEAN-India uh, relationship in general, the newly established or recently established ASEAN-India Center um, has a key role to play um, because I think at the SOM level, uh, senior official level, we have agreed that it not just focus on economic also, but 
on political security as well as social, cultural, and people to people. So I think the, the role of the ASEAN India is in that sense expanded um, and encompasses the other, what we in ASEAN call pillars um, of cooperation. Um, <clears throat> looking ahead, um, there are also other areas of cooperation where ASEAN and India are able to work on and improve. And this is where um, a lot of focus, even at this uh, dialogue, has been, um, I would say, 70%, given due respect to the economic and trade aspect. But um, as was mentioned, interestingly, by the minister uh, this morning, uh, political security uh, in the partnership between ASEAN and India also plays an important role because it ensures continued uh, economic development, prosperity and growth uh, in the region. So um, it is very closely entwined um, in terms of uh, terrorism, maritime security and importantly um, issues like uh, humanitarian assistance and disaster relief which are becoming um, frequent uh, issues within Asia and Asia Pacific itself. Now, with that, um, those elements uh, in the background, uh, what can the Delhi Dialogue do? Um, we believe ASEAN and India cooperation uh, is significantly enriched by the annual Delhi Dialogue, this being the sixth in a series, because it provides that platform for government officials, academicians, regional strategic think tanks to provide views and share the best practices and experiences with one another. Like I said, this is the only other Track 1.5 forum, which ASEAN has, um, aside from the East Asia Forum. Now, this discussion would serve, um, outcome from this, this discussion would serve good recommendations and ideas for policies. I have read some of the reports from previous Delhi Dialogue, and they have got very good recommendations, which could be taken up at the Track 1 level. Um, <clears throat> in addition, seeing that the Delhi Dialogue is also held uh, normally for the last few years, if not um, for since its start uh, during the first quarter of the year, it offers a good framework, framework for deliberation for the series of meetings that are happening between ASEAN and India throughout the year. So it's a good input. For example, for this year, we have the senior official, the track one, will have its meeting in, in May. And I think it would be good to have some of those input outco outcome documents also uh, raised at the senior officials meeting and deliberated as part of um, the ongoing process of bringing in the uh, track 1.5 into the track one process. Therefore, I look forward to seeing more of these inputs and outcome at our senior officials' meetings, and, to con and that would contribute to deepening and strengthening the ASEAN-India strategic partnership. Um, I think it was mentioned earlier, but let me just say that I, I also hope that the participation for the ASEAN-India dialogue could be further enriched uh, with participation from not just ASEAN and India, uh, but also uh, from the East Asia region, as well as beyond uh, East Asia region. And as today, we have we started to talk about Asia Pacific, but we know that some of the key actors in the Asia Pacific are not here to also provide their possible input towards the um, you know the enrichment of this dialogue. So um, finally, I'd just like to come to the end and wish the continued success of the Delhi Dialogue and I hope that
this dialogue continue to grow in significance and prominence in the future. Thank you.